Hello, welcome back to Board with Paints Fast the Mysterious Manor Painting Series. Today we'll be finishing up all the miniatures from the base game by painting the spider and the spiderlings. Let's take a quick look at the painting steps. These should all be familiar to you by now. We'll start off with priming the miniature, followed by applying some base colors. And then, just like we did with the wraith, we're going to do some wet blending to meld some of those colors together, which should provide a nice organic look to the hair. Then we'll move on to do some highlights and shading before protecting the miniature with a matte varnish. Since we'll be using a lot of brighter colors, I decided to prime the miniatures off camera in a light gray. Let's jump right into painting on the base colors. I'm starting here with the large spider and I'm going to paint the entire bottom of the spider using black gray. You'll notice that there's a big red area on the bottom. That's where I had him stuck to something while I held him for priming. But that's just a very small area, so covering it with paint should be fine. Once we get a finish on there, it'll be well okay. Next, we'll cover the bottom of the spiderlings with resurrection flesh. The coverage on this paint isn't very good, so I had to apply two or three coats to get good coverage. I'm only painting the bottom for now, and once that dries, I'm going to then stick it on something so I don't need to touch the miniature anymore to paint the rest of it. Back to the big spider and our black gray. I'm going to use this to cover just around the neck area where you see in the artwork where the blue fades down into darkness. I'm also going to go around the bottom edge and bring that up a little bit further. For the red parts of the spider, I'm using the same mix we used back in episode 2 for the sorcerer. We're combining Bloodfest Crimson with Mephiston Red. This will go everywhere that the spider is red, so the large part of the body, the face, um, and the legs, except for the joints, which are going to be a lighter beige color. At this stage, we are not at all concerned with blending or transitions. We're just trying to block in the color. We'll worry about getting everything blended together a little later. Moving on to the face, we'll cover all of the fangs, the upper part of the head, but we'll leave a small strip in the middle unpainted. That's going to get the beige color later and it'll be easier to apply that over a lighter color than over the red. Now that we have the spiderlings mounted on a holder, I'm just going to finish base coating it in the resurrection flesh. This will cover the entire miniature. Returning to the large spider, we're going to paint the edges of all of the feet in Amarth Blue. We'll also use this blue to paint the strip that is on his back between the transition of the red and the black gray. Again, we're not trying to blend here, so just block in the color about where you think it should go. 
We'll leave the joints unpainted for now. It'll be easier to hit those later on after we do the wet blending, which just so happens to be the next step. We'll start off with the large spider and we're going to add some slow dry medium to both the blue and the red mix. This gives us more time to work with the colors and more time to work them and blend them together. Starting with the red, we'll apply this right along the border where it meets the blue. And then we'll go to the blue and do the same thing. Now using a clean brush, we'll just blend these two colors together right along the transitional area. Just move the brush back and forth between the two colors until you get a nice purple and smooth out that transition as much as you can. If the transition's still a little bit ragged, just grab some more color and put it in there. I worked with this a little bit until it just felt about right. Here I'm just continuing to refine, adding some more red, adding some more blue, and feathering out the transition to the main color. Now we'll try to do the exact same thing on the legs. Next, we'll try to smooth out the transition between the red and the black gray. So I'm applying some of the red here above the black, and then I'm gonna go in with some black gray mixed with a little bit of the slow dry medium, and we'll blend those together the same way we did with the red and the blue earlier. Switching back over to the spiderlings, we're going to grab our Amarth Blue again, thin it down a little, and we're going to paint all the little feet here, trying to get a little bit of a transition between the existing beige flesh color and the blue. It doesn't have to be too smooth because we're going to be doing a lot of dry brushing and washing on top of this. Our large spider should be dry by now, so we'll go back to the flat flesh and we will paint in all of the joints with this color.
The spider has kind of a beige stripe across the middle of its face, so we're going to paint that right now. We'll also paint the joints on the spiderlings. Now we'll move on to the highlights and shading. We'll start by applying a dry brush of ivory to the small spiderling. I'm using a cheap makeup brush for this. Makeup brushes are really nice for dry brushing because they're so soft and you can really do a light dry brush with them as opposed to a heavier bristle brush which can give a much rougher texture. We'll apply this over the entire miniature. This will give us the added benefit of obscuring some of those rough transitions between the blue and the beige colors. Now we'll dry brush some Evil Sun Scarlet onto the red areas of the large spider. I need to switch to a smaller brush here to do the legs and the face. We'll brighten this up by adding a little bit of ivory to the Evil Sun Scarlet. I'll go over most of those red areas again, maybe covering a slightly smaller area to focus the highlights. Next we'll dry brush the blue areas by mixing some azure in with some of the Amarth blue. I'm going to hit the feet with this as well as the blue stripe on the spider's back. Now I'll layer on some highlights by mixing some ivory in with the flat flesh. This will go on the joints of the spider as well as the beige stripe across his face. We'll apply this only to the raised areas of texture on these joints. We don't want to get it in any of the recesses. Now I'm highlighting the beige area of the face, being very careful not to get on any of the red or get in the recesses. Next, we'll take our blue and azure mix and use that to highlight the tips of the toes.
And here I'm returning to the Evil Sun Scarlet and boosting the highlights on the spider's face and head. I'll also be selectively hitting parts of the red portion of the legs with this. I'm being careful here only to pick out the raised areas of texture. I'm trying to make sure that the recesses stay dark and I'm only putting extra highlight on the raised hairs on these fangs. This is getting repeated on the legs, just hitting those raised hairy textures. Next, we'll add some depth to the shadows of the beige areas by covering them with Reikland Flesh Shade. While we have this out, let's apply this over the entirety of the spiderlings. And wouldn't you know it, the big spider also has joints on the lower parts of his legs that I didn't realize until now. So let's paint those up with some flat flesh. While that dries, we'll return to the spiderlings and apply a dry brush of ivory. This will restore some of the highlights that got dulled down when we applied the wash. I'm trying to keep this focused on mainly just the top areas. Here I'm adding some Reichlin Flesh Shade to the lower joints that we just painted on the large spider. Now let's put some life into these models and paint the eyes. We'll begin by base coating each eye with Bloodfest Crimson. Both the large spider and the spiderlings will have their eyes painted exactly the same way. You can see the eyes already have a layer of pink paint on them. You can ignore that, I was going to go a different direction with them and then I changed my mind.
The eyes will each get a highlight of a mixture of Bloodfest Crimson and Pink Horror. These highlights will be focused in the lower portion of the eye, and I'm trying to make sort of a U-shape at the bottom to follow the curvature of the eyeball. This is similar to the way you might paint a gemstone, where the bulk of the color is going to sink down to the bottom of the gem, and the top will be a little bit darker. We'll build this color up over a few layers. Each time we'll add a little bit of ivory to the mix to lighten it. We'll boost these highlights up with a tiny bit more ivory. You can tell you're getting close to being done when it begins to trigger your arachnophobia. I considered calling it finished at this point, but I felt like we could push things a little more, so I decided to boost the contrast a bit. We'll start with some Drakenhof Nightshade, and I'll apply this to the blue areas of the feet. I'm also applying this to the blue area on the back of the spider. Now to add some depth and reinforce the cartoony feel, we're going to do some dark lining by mixing a little bit of black ink with some water. As in previous videos, we want to wick off any excess liquid on a paper towel before touching it to the miniature. We'll start by tracing out the lines on the body of the spiderlings. Just take your time and let the ink flow down into the recesses. If it gets out a little bit, you can usually wipe it off quickly with your finger. There also seems to be a line going across the head that's easy to miss. Next we'll put a dark line around each eyeball. This really helps the eyes stick out and makes them way more visible. I also decided to outline the fangs. Now we'll do the exact same thing on the large spider, starting here with the eyes.
And now we'll outline the fangs. and provide some separation between the beige and the red areas of the face. We can clean up around each joint by adding a dark line around it. To give the eyes a nice shiny finishing touch, we'll add a very small dot of ivory in the corner of each one. The dot can go anywhere, but it should be in the same location on each eye. I've decided to go with the upper right corner. Both the spider and the spiderlings will get identical treatment. Returning to the large spider, I'm adding a little bit of highlight to the dark gray sections. I'm just mixing some ivory in with the black gray and applying that anywhere an edge would catch some light. We'll boost this with a little more ivory and apply it over a smaller area. I felt like some of the beige areas could use a little more contrast. So mixing some ivory in with the flat flesh and highlighting those areas a little bit more. Same thing for the red areas. At this point, I'm being very careful to pick out individual strands of hair. and I'm boosting them very sparingly a little bit more by adding more flat flesh to the evil suns. This is just getting the very upper edges of the hairs that are highlighted. I'm mostly focusing these highlights in the front of the miniature to give it more of a focal point.
Because the large spider has so much dark red on it, I decided to lighten some of the pink horror and apply more highlights on the lower part of the eyes. This will make them stick out a little more against that red. Now we'll do the same thing with the blue, mixing some azure with the amarth blue, and we'll hit the edges of the feet and anything that's upturned with this, just to boost the highlight a little more. Again, we're focusing on individual strands of hair at this point, just trying to pick them out and increase the contrast slightly. At this point, these miniatures are pretty much complete, so I'm removing them from their holders to take a look at the bottom and see if we need to do anything. So we've got some issues here. You can see the wash pulled around the sticky tack and left a dark ring. And taking the tack off actually removes some of our undercoat and some of our paint. So we're going to have to fix that up. I'm not hugely concerned about it because it's the bottom of the model, but I feel like we should at least make it look a little better than this. We'll begin by reapplying the base coat over the bottom of the model. This will cover up the dark ring and we can cover up any of the places where the paint was removed. Remember this paint's coverage isn't very good, so I had to use multiple coats. After applying a couple of coats of that and letting it dry, I'm now reapplying the Reichland Flesh Shade Wash. Here it is after drying. And I think that's pretty good for the bottom of the model that nobody's going to see. The sticky tack didn't have the same effect on the large spider, thankfully. So I'm just wrapping it up by applying some non oil over the entire bottom to bring out some of the shadows. With the painting complete, all that's left to do is apply a final varnish. You can see my other videos to see how that's done. And there we have it. That wraps up the spider and the spiderlings. We'll give you a look at the finished spiderlings first here. And here we have the completed spider. Thank you so much for watching Board with Paint. I hope this helped you or at least was entertaining in some way. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you went down and clicked the subscribe button, liked the video, click the notification bell, all those things that you do on a YouTube channel that you like. This finishes up the painting of the base game, but let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to paint stuff from the expansions or from the Crystal Caverns, or even if there's a different game you'd like to see. Thanks again for watching, and as always, until next time, happy painting.